Commentary Booth is a show for media lovers by media lovers just like you. If you want to support the show, go to pariomagazine.com.au. And then in terms of Cobra Kai, season five, following on as a continual continuation of the, the sequel series to the Karate Kid movies. Mm. And this time we see Daniel and Johnny continuing to try to bring down Cobra Kai, Terry Silver taking over after John Kreese was framed of assault. And yeah, it just continues on in phenomenal fashion. Overall, what did you think of this season? I think there was a lot of growth. Um, I feel like there was just such a change in this season compared to the other four, um, particularly with obviously, you know, Terry Silver betraying John and, and taking over Cobra Kai. But for me, just seeing the growth of Johnny Lawrence as well mm-hmm. from kind of being such a hard head still at heart, but really being a bit more lenient and I think a bit more understanding of others and obviously, you know, the growth in becoming a father again and the challenges that that happens and, and brings along as well. So seeing his growth for me was just such a huge change and, and it was really exciting. Yeah, there was there was so much growth for him because like, I remember when we were first introduced to him in season one of Cobra Kai, he was the, the guy that didn't use technology he couldn't use a phone or the in- the internet. He was just like, send it to the internet. And then yeah. by this season, he's Googling conflict resolution. He's working for Uber and DoorDash. And yeah, like he's just all over the technology. I was like, okay, he's, he's changed a lot. Which again, knowing me, I can absolutely relate to. So <laughs> yeah, just very, very entertaining stuff from his end. And then overall for me, like this season started a little bit slow and I was like initially thinking, oh no, have they lost, lost that special spark. But then I think by about episode four or five, when they, all the, the groups sort of start coming back together, I was like, okay, now I'm in. And I think it finished with possibly the best final episode or best episode of the series as a whole. I absolutely agree. I was kind of in the same boat where I was... Again, it was a bit of a slow start and I was kind of almost at a point where I was like, yeah, maybe maybe it's worth just kind of giving up on the series. And then all of a sudden it just switches on you. And in terms of the cliffhanger that it leads at the end, um, that caught me off guard completely. Um, and it was one of those things where it just kept pulling you in bit by bit by bit, um, especially with Stinray coming back as well. That mm-hmm. kind of got me into it again. Um, and obviously with this whole, you know, the, the, the All Valley is obviously quite, the big tournament when it comes to this series but then obviously being introduced to this japanese tournament um and kind of realizing that this is just such a bigger bubble when it comes to the world of karate sucked me even even more to the point of now like the the, the stakes are higher <laughs> it's just going to be there's so many more bodies involved so many more names you know what's going to happen so um yeah very busy season towards the end and uh what a setup for season six. Oh yeah like it, yeah it went from this little regional small town thing of we just don't want to be bullied by the other kids to now this is like world domination states. Yeah. I was like, whoa, is that elevated <laughs> to new heights with the Sakai Takai? Yeah. Um, the other thing I thought was a little bit strange was there is weirdly a lot of karate dojos in the valley. Like, I feel like in the real world, there's, there's hardly ever that many karate dojos in one town. Yeah, th- th- there were heaps. And for me as well, just the... <laughs> The amount of regular people that just seem to know karate, I, I think yeah. the, the character, his character's name, I think was Mike and he owned like a, uh, was it like a, a furnishing store. Uh, or, yeah, the furniture guy. Like, this guy has no time for anything else. You know, he's probably got a major business. He's obviously very busy, quite wealthy. You'd think he'd put all these, you know, eggs in that basket, but here he is an absolute like weapon at the same time. Um, yeah, like he yeah. learned karate as a kid and is still like a black belt level. Dude, just crazy stuff. So when it comes to, I guess, you know, being in the valley, you just you just don't know who knows <laughs> karate. So, yeah, it's full on. Uh, what did you think of, like we said at the start, a bit slow, the Johnny and Robbie going to Mexico to rescue Miguel, essentially? Hmm. I thought that felt a little bit off. Like, it felt like they set that up last season. And then when it came back this season, they were kind of like, well, this isn't really working the way we had envisioned. So let's kind of get out of this as quickly as we can. Yeah, I think it, it almost felt like they, like you said, they'd started something. And I don't know if, again, it was because, you know, it was sort of towards the end of season four 
and there was such a long gap that maybe they had in mind of maybe try to just kind of reinform the viewers of what had happened. Um, but yeah, it was it, it, something didn't, I, I wouldn't say didn't feel right, but I just think it was a little bit longer than what it needs to be. Um, but at the same time, you know, having that character arc and kind of almost having, I guess, that situation of Miguel going to Mexico kind of showed, I guess, the, the father intuition of, of Johnny and kind of showed a different light towards him and mm -hmm. seeing a bit of a change in, I guess, scenery and, and seeing again, you know, a bit, a bit more of a comedic side to Johnny with trying to understand the language and eventually <laughs> get our toad when he just thought the guy wanted to buy his van and stuff like that and getting into fight with Australians, which, you know, I mean, <laughs> I found that hilarious. Josh Wilson I, I, popping up as an Australian surfer. I, of course, you know, and, and, uh, you know, probably wasn't right, but being a fellow Aussie, I was rooting for him so hard, but, um, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I, I don't know if Aussies is really scammers in Mexico. So, um, yeah, I feel like we'd yeah. probably be the people getting scammed, not running the scams. Or if anything, you know, we're pretty laid back, you know, individuals. I think I feel like we'd help someone out without having to charge them or, or try and, you know, beat them up. So, uh, yeah, but again, it, it was probably a bit s slow in that sense, but also I think it may be necessary in seeing some changes within Johnny and, and Robbie as well. Yeah, like it, it definitely paid off in the end where yeah. all those elements sort of did build up to the, the crescendo at the end. But yeah, in those first couple of episodes, I was just kind of like, oh, what are we doing here? This is <laughs> this is not what I was expecting from this series. I guess the, having patience eventually paid off. Yep. Yeah, they were, they were teaching us our own wax on, wax off moment there. <laughs> um, and we mentioned Josh Law Lawson popping up. There was a couple of other celebrity cameos as well did you notice the two ufc stars i did is it again my my knowledge with with ufc is it great is it tyrone woodley yeah so tyrone woodley yeah. was one of the uh senseis that uh terry silver brings in yes and the other one was wonder boy stephen thompson who's okay. another ufc fighter as well so i was like that's pretty cool that they actually got legitimate fighters into I imagine help choreography as well as act. Yeah, I'm sure that was the case. It was interesting. So it was one of those things where I, I felt like, I'm like I've definitely seen you before, but I'm not sure <laughs> from. And then once I kind of worked it out and yeah, it was, it was very intriguing, I guess, maybe seeing if there was going to be a bit more of maybe an MMA influence with the, within this season as well. Um, yeah. I wonder if that'll come into the, the next tournament. It, where it's, it, it could cool. possibly, like, that's what I really enjoyed about this season as well, was just seeing the amount of different influences as well as like with the addition of chosen, it kind of made me think a little bit about wrestling as well. And there's no real one way of doing it. And it's just mm -hmm. such a whirlwind of different styles. And when they come together, it's actually really interesting. And I found that very similar within this season and all obviously the different dojos and, and the different beliefs. So, um, yeah, it really kind of, like you said, I guess it went from, you know, being something within, you know, the Valley to kind of really becoming a global thing with just so many different individuals. And what did you think of the like ramp up in violence compared to previous seasons as well? Like we saw Tyrone Woodley's character gets his finger chopped off. Yeah. And I legitimately thought Chosen was murdered in that final I, episode. I, so I'm glad because I was like, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way they, they're going to allow murder on this series because I was convinced too. So, um, yeah and like obviously within the other seasons there was some pretty like some nasty stuff happened right obviously with miguel yep. going to hop and stuff like that and robbie going on the run but now to the stage of you know people losing fingers and and you know <laughs> getting stabbed in the back yeah it's really taken a dark turn but obviously and we, and we just discussed it earlier i think you know you and i being kind of a fan of like tarantino style films um it kind of gave me a bit of kill bill uh oh, kill yeah. bill vibes so Very. i was kind of like I was kind of like into it and I kind of liked in a way them taking a risk because I do feel like it was quite family orientated at first and it still kind of is. Um, but I think obviously with things being, you know, at a high stake, you know, there comes higher risk. So I just found it very entertaining. It was kind of confronting, but also that's what you want in the series. That's what's good. That's what's going to drag you in and keep you watching. And I think that, that was the major change in kind of, okay, this is why we stuck around through those first few episodes is so we can get to this point and kind of get this reaction and this reward and the excitement that it brings. Yeah, I think you do need those those shock moments where it it does prove that this is a show for, I guess, people who grew up on Karate Kid. So they're not, it's not like it's directly targeted to kids, but it, it can still draw in the kids as well. Yes. Like if, if they didn't have those shock moments, I think 
the adults would eventually just be like, oh, I don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah. This is yeah, too I'd... kid friendly. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought another major moment was the Miguel and uh, Robbie fight at the apartment before they find out about the pregnancy. Yes. That was such an intense fight. I thought that was really well done. I, I agree. And I think for us too, we kind of never really got a conclusion after what had happened before. Um, where I think for them, you know, getting to the stage of being through so much, and I think they finally had an opportunity to just let it all out. And then obviously getting the news and putting things into perspective. Yeah, it was it was really, really well done. And we, we sort of got like Tekken level changes as well, where they're getting kicked through doors and... All of a sudden, they're in a different places in part of the fight. I was like, oh, this is really, this is so well done. Yeah, absolutely. And I loved the the contrast between how uh, Johnny is trying so hard in all these other ways to get these two boys to come together. Like he's taking them out for dinners. He's trip, tricking them into being in the same place to do yeah. his own little made up escape room where he's locked <laughs> himself in his own house. <laughs> <laughs> when really all he had to do was go back to old school Johnny Lawrence and just let them fight it out. Yeah, which is, it's funny because I guess kind of, you know, him becoming a dad again, you'd kind of think the opposite of being a parent and, you know, not wanting to resort to, to I guess, violence. But I guess in, in this scenario and, and who he is as a person, in a way with karate, violence somehow kind of shaped him and helped him out in a lot of situations. So I guess in this case, like you said, he really just had to kind of like just sit back and let them just handle it um so yeah and i guess it, it, that was what was kind of interesting was seeing again johnny really trying different ways to kind of i guess reach some sort of an agreement um and him i guess growing in terms of trying to find other ways of sorting out i guess difficult situations within his family and maybe will this shape him when it comes to the birth of his next child you know so yeah it's very interesting stuff and then on the flip side, we had Daniel sort of going the opposite direction where he was, he was the one drinking all the time and just like trying to instigate everything instead of being logical and methodical about things. I thought that was a nice little flip of the script, but then they still brought them back together for those final couple of episodes. Yeah, I guess that kind of really creates, you know, I feel like it kind of creates a lot of tension within the viewer too and a bit of doubt of may maybe, you know, for so long he's been he's had a sort of, I guess, reputation and vision on how things should be done in the world of karate. And then I guess, you know, you kind of think, man, if, if for him to lose it, it must be a really, really serious thing to make him kind of go against all his instincts and morals. And it kind of created a bit of panic in me. Cause then I was like, I'm, I was convinced that that's it. Like Cobra Kai mm -hmm. <laughs> have got the bag, but for them, for him to then kind of go back into, you know, I guess, you know, Miyagi Udo's teaching, um, you know, it's similar to like with, with Johnny, sometimes you just got to go back to, I guess, your instincts and what you're taught early on. Sometimes you it's, you know, if it's not broken, you know, you don't need to fix it. Um, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I think, you know, it's very relatable because sometimes we we forget that. Um, the answer's always been there. You just got to kind of remind yourself that it is. And I think it made them feel like much more real life characters as well, because yeah, not everybody is one way, like they don't, set out on one path for their life and then that's it they don't change they're set in their ways the entire time like a lot of people do have those winding paths throughout their life so it felt real 100 percent. i think this, for me this was the most relatable season of the series uh and then a few outside notes since the season has aired did you see that there is a new karate kid movie that has been confirmed by S sony pictures oh really? i have not so yeah on a couple of weeks ago, Karate Kid was confirmed to be happening by Sony Pictures due to release on June 7th of 2024. Okay. But when I first saw it, I was like, oh yeah, cool. This is going to be the Cobra Kai movie to mm -hmm. like conclude everything. And I was like, oh, it's going to be the Sakai Attack Guy. But then I found out there is a sixth season. So that's probably where that's going to happen. Right. And apparently this movie has no connection to the Cobra Kai franchise, which I thought was <laughs> such a weird decision. I <laughs> was that kind of similar with i feel like that was similar with the one with jen smith right mm -hmm. is, so is it kind of almost like we're kind of doing it another version of that in a way yeah like i i'm not sure what the confirmed direction is like are they just going to try and reboot this again and I, ignore this really popular franchise that they have that you could cash in on like what are you doing i, 
hundred percent. I don't know. I feel like it's a real common thing now with with movies. Is they kind of we're going. We're not kind of creating. I don't want to say that they're not creating new stories, but I find that a lot of films are very reliant on older franchises and just kind mm-hmm. of almost doing them over and over again with different actors. And again, I think, like you said, you know, Cobra Kai is just so popular at the moment. Why would you not cash in on that? Um, so, you know, all, all the best of them, and hopefully it, it does become a really good film. But I think for a lot of people, when you associate the Karate Kid, it really makes you think about Cobra Kai. Ooh. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Because I, as soon as you told me, I was like, oh, okay, this is where, like you said, the grand finale is going to happen. It's going to be, you know, a movie picture. So it's interesting. Um, yeah, very curious to see how it goes. We've got time, I guess. So yeah yeah just another weird sony decision where like instead of making something connected to the spider-man movies they tried to do all these offshoots that just don't like land as well i'm like okay okay we could have just done a cobra kai movie and you would have been guaranteed to get a profit on that whereas now you're going to reboot an old franchise and risk it flopping yeah absolutely so yeah i think like i said i think season six is going to be this big Sakai Takai world tournament. How do you think that's going to play out? Do you think we will get those MMA influences or is it going to be very strictly karate kind of like the old, like three ninjas movie where they went to the world tournament? Right. So, Cause again, I feel like we're kind of going to this point of within like Johnny and, and Daniel, they kind of gone down these different paths, but they always come back, I guess, to their original selves. And it's one of those things, maybe we'll see influences within the tournament. I think it's going to make it interesting as well, especially when, you know, it's this global tournament and you're going to be in a situation where not everyone's going to be doing the same thing. I do feel like there will be a lot of different influences and fighting styles, but I feel like at the end of the day, it's just going to come back again to two between Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do. I think at the end of the day, you you kind of like got that big, big circle of storytelling. It's just going to come back, I guess, to where it all started. So I see it kind of paying off like that. Um, but I'm very curious to see, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited. I'm a big fan of Japanese culture as well. So I feel like the fact that you got these guys coming to Japan and obviously, you know, got, got that Tekken vibe as well. Um, and just like the, the fighting spirit of, of, of Japan. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really exciting. Yeah. I think it could be a, a phenomenal season and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, it'll probably come down to the final being probably Robbie and Miguel forced to like battle it out oh. as which style okay. was correct oh man that's rough <laughs> i know it'll, it'll be hard to watch but uh it, 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 it is the up. cobra kai miyagi do it is it is especially after like i feel like we kind of yeah because i almost felt like we had that conclusion of like okay i guess robbie and miguel have kind of forgiven each other and they are in a good headspace but i guess at the end of the day now we're going to see them in the headspace of competition which in itself might be even more exciting so yeah, that's heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> with it being potentially in Japan, maybe we will see some Japanese wrestling talent pop up as cameos as well. I think that could be a really cool crossover. Dude, give me give me Tanahashi and Okada in the front row. Dude, maybe Great Mood will come in and do some dragon screwed leg whips, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's some exciting, exciting stuff. So. Shingo in the background in his dragon mask would be really cool. Dude, hey yeah, man, oh, I'm, I'm very excited. Hopefully that's, that's the case. I think it'd be really cool as well having, I guess, that pro wrestling influence as well, being so such a big thing in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that's really, really exciting. That, yep. that could be a possibility. Yeah, some pro wrestling, some sumo. Like, There's so many it, options to explore in the Japanese culture. You know, yeah, it, it, all, all, you know, all combat sports kind of meet together. So, yeah. Alrighty. Awesome. So outside of Cobra Kai and this upcoming tour, is there any other things that you would recommend people check out that you watch right now, during the, your travels? To, to watch during your travels? Yep. So, oh man, I'm a, I'm a big, awesome, I'm a real big true crime guy mm-hmm. and then I, I love my documentaries. So I always recommend in terms of documentaries, uh, Icarus, which is just about, you know, uh, when it comes to the Russians doping and it was essentially a documentary. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, very good. Yeah. Very, very I just good. Have, and again, they just went from, okay, let's try and replicate Lance uh, Armstrong's, I guess, cycle to then become this massive global scandal. So kind of similar to, I guess, with Cobra Kai, it just started out small and then became this huge thing. Um, 
but for me too, man, I, I just, I'm a big fan of also, you know, the nice guys. That's a comedy that's still on Netflix at the moment. If you get a chance to see that it's with Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. Um, but you know, just keep an eye out, man. And I guess for me, you know, it's easy for me to say, you know, have your downtime, but right now my eyes and, and my mind are so focused ahead on this tour. That's kind of hard for me to really just be able to sit down and watch a program and not think about it. So yeah, if anything, you know, just, uh, you know, get ready to, and buckle up for this tour. And uh, I guess in the downtime, you know, there's a lot available. And if you haven't seen Cobra Kai, um, I absolutely recommend that as well. Yep. hundred percent. either Cobra yeah. Kai for a nice fun watch. Um, I just finished the, the new, if you like true crime, uh, Dharma, the like drama series about Jeffrey Dharma. That's, oh. that's pretty full on, but if you can get yeah. through the really intense scenes, I think it's a, a phenomenal series. Like so well done. So well acted. Yeah. I definitely have to check that one out for sure. But yeah, apart from that, I'm looking forward to this PWA let's F and go tour. Good luck with that. Uh, yeah, so thank you everyone for listening to the commentary booth. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on podcast services, YouTube, and iTunes. Oh, not iTunes anymore. Just podcast services and YouTube. Uh, you can follow me on social media at Jamie Ups Media and at Paria Magazine. And you can check Paris out on Instagram at underscore Spartan Spirit. And your Twitter is, I can't remember Twitter. off the top of my head. Yo, you're right. It's uh, at Paris of Silver 22. There it is. Awesome. And we'll catch you at the PWA Let's F and Go Tour. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you there, mate. The Commentary Booth is a fan-funded production of Jamie Apps Media. You can support the podcast alongside our magazine, Pario Magazine, on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Jamie Apps Media. The following people supported at the community support group level or higher and you cannot fathom how incredibly appreciative we are for their support. Brian and June Hart, Blake Robinson, Rena Renee, Courtney Paulson, Darren Hatcliffe, Jackson Carr, and Tracy Apps.